GPT-5 was just launched in one of the most boring, sleepy demos from OpenAI I have seen in the recent times. This is a great model, but this is not something that is going to take you forward to AGI. As much as OpenAI wants to claim that they are an AGI company, this is designed to be a coding agent and this model is heavily, heavily optimized for software programmers, which I'm honestly happy about because that is my line of work as well. But I just want to get that out before we think that this is a magical AGI moment. No, you can't feel the AGI. The biggest point about GPT-5 is this model is ridiculously cheaper when you compare it with its competitor, let us say Claude 4.1 Opus. So Claude 4.1 Opus was just launched a couple of days back. Nobody gave a ham about it. But if you see the pricing comparison, GPT-5, which is almost similar to Claude 4.1 Opus on a lot of benchmarks, is just $10 per million token for output. On contrary, if you see Claude Opus 4.1, the output is $75. You've got $10 and $75. Add that to the poor infrastructure that Anthropic has got, I think GPT-5 is already winning. There is no doubt about it. And in terms of even the benchmark about Claude Sonnet 4, even that is more expensive than GPT-5. Now you might say that GPT or ChatGPT, OpenAI is burning cash, but who cares? You and I can profit at this particular point while they burn their cash or maybe Satya Nadella will put more money into them. Anyway, Jensen Huang is going to be happy. That's a different thing. So anyways, GPT-5 is a great model. We're going to discuss more about the model's benchmarks later in this video. But if you have to pause the video, close it. This is a good model. You can just straight away start using it in your developer account. And it's much, much cheaper than Claude Opus 4.1. In terms of the model in itself, the model is going to be available for free users and OpenAI is going to discontinue their previous models. And they're going to have this one GPT-5 instead of having the model selector that you have been using to select different models. Do I like this? I absolutely hate it. As a power user or like slightly above average user, I always loved selecting my models for the use cases that I want. O3 sometimes, Foro Mini sometimes, depending upon whatever I wanted at that particular time. But now AI is going to do the job for me. Do I like this? I don't like this. But OpenAI claims that a lot of people have not used their powerful model. Like you could be like doctor, you could be a teacher. So they want to change this. So I can understand the point that they've got. They're saying this is a huge leap in intelligence. Don't believe them, this is complete BS. So this is going to be one unified system. And uh, I guess this model is like a fine tuned, improved version of O3 that's heavily optimized for agentic tasks. So if you see the evils, the evils, you can see one thing is like many benchmarks, they've maxed it out. That's why I don't trust these benchmarks. A lot of benchmarks, they believe that, oh, we are this SOTA, like state of the art of this particular benchmark. That means the benchmark is completely useless at this point. So I'm, I'm not going to look at HMMT. I'm not going to look at GPQA. I'm not going to look at the uh, Amy 2020, all these models, all these benchmarks, they're not doing good. One interesting benchmark though, they, they, they claim that we are the best coding model on the planet based on SWE Bench Verified, which is a software engineering benchmark where you have to solve GitHub issues. OpenAI, like in this weird chart, you can see that they say that they've scored 74.9% and Claude Opus 4.1 has scored 74.5%. So in terms of the intelligence or the coding capability, I don't think this model is uh, way above Claude 4.1 Opus. But now when you bring in the pricing factor, then you can see that this model is good. Ada Polyglot, which is a popular benchmarking based on the Ada code editor and uh, OpenAI has scored 88% on this particular benchmark. And the model is supposed to be very fast, but during the demo, we saw a couple of times on cursor, at least the model took a lot of time to think. That's because the model makes a lot of parallel tool calls. Go to the website, do this, do that, scrape. So it is doing a lot of things. And at the same time, the model is supposed to be fast. I think combining that the model is at like a decent speed altogether. Another very interesting benchmark I was looking forward to is called Tau. So Tau Bench is a benchmark measures the model's agentic capabilities. GPT-5 has scored 96% on telecom, 81% on retail and 62% on uh, airline. And this is not again too different from Anthropic. So Anthropic has scored on retail itself is 84%. So it's better than GPT-5. On telecom and airline, at least telecom they have not reported, but on airline, Anthropic's Claude Opus 4.1 has scored 54%. Clearly this is a good model for agentic use cases. Once again, we saw this. We also saw it in the cursor demo where it makes a lot of tool calls. And I think that is a good thing. And there have been speculations that OpenAI might launch an AI device or a browser 
So this entire thing will take us towards that particular direction. The multimodal capability of the model is good. It has scored 84% on MMMU. So this is the multimodality related task. And overall, the models emphasized seem to be on two different things during the demo. One, programmers, 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 or I can say like Steve Ballmer and say developers, developers, developers. But the other aspect is health. It almost seems like OpenAI wants doctors, pharmaceutical companies, uh, life science research companies to be partnered with them. So there, there was a lot of emphasis on health aspect. And you can see on health bench, uh, OpenAI's GPT-5 uh, scored 67%, which is a lot above than O3. Again, like with when you when you increase the extended thinking, you can see that it is increasing. One thing they've also mentioned that the hallucination has gone down in terms of safety aspect. This model is much better. Generally, the model is good. The model is going to write a very similar front end code that you've been seeing all AI editors to write the boring purple gradient. And the model is also going to be fast and the model is lot cheaper than Claude Opus 4.1, but also not too cheap when you compare it with Gemini 2.5 Pro. So based on which school of thought you are, like whether you are in the Google DeepMind school or whether you are on, uh, let's say the Claude fans, uh, you can choose whatever model that you want. But if you are Elon Musk fan, if you are the Grok fan, then you have a happy news. The happy news is that OpenAI GPT-5 did not beat Grok 4 in Arc AGI 3 challenge. It doesn't have anything to do with AGA again. GPT-5 is still in single digit, while Grok has done a lot of improvement there. Overall, I think this is like great model, great release, but nothing related to the hype that they made. And it is nothing closer to AGA. You can't feel the AGA. Maybe it's only Ilya Sutskever who can feel it. See you in another video. Happy prompting.